you very much indeed. Hello, I'm Alexander Armstrong and welcome to Pointless, the quiz show where the lowest scorers are the biggest winners. Let's meet today's players. And first, we welcome back Paul and Nick. You were on the show last time. Everyone gets two chances to reach the Pointless final and this is your second and last chance. Remind us what happened. Oh, well, picked a topic that I don't like, football. Oh, just couldn't think of anything. I'm totally, totally blank. So this afternoon, you're going to atone for last time's performance. What's going to come up, Nick? What's, what's going to come up that's going to be a chance for you to dazzle us? As long as it's not football, I think we'll be fine. Now, anything at all. Any general knowledge. Paul's very good at general knowledge. Somewhere we have quizzes all the time. Christmas time, unbelievable competitive streaks. You wouldn't believe. Our partners say, it's only a game. No, it's not. Taken very seriously. <laughs> Taken. Uh, well, it's great having you back. Very Thank best you. of luck. I hope we'll have you for much longer than last time. And so do we. we. <laughs> and next, we welcome Lynn and Glennis. Great to have you on the show. Now, how do you two know each other? Um, well, we met about 11 years ago, and I was a uh, lady captain at a golf club that we're no longer members at. And Glennis came along to join, and we just became really firm friends. Now, Lynn, what would you like to see come up this afternoon? What would be a cracking subject for you? Anything that's been on the programmes before would be helpful. The yes, ones that I've watched, and I've right. watched lots of them. Yeah. Uh, and I have got it on... I'm a bit sad, because I've got it on series link, because I haven't been in just lately, because I've been playing golf too much, so... So, um, basically, your, your specialist topic is pointless. Pointless. OK, very good. <laughs> it is pointless. Glennis, what about you? What would be great for you? General knowledge, I'd really like, or travel or geography. Okay. I've travelled a lot. I've been really lucky. My daughter worked for a well-known airline for 10 years, long haul. So I got to travel quite a lot of the world with her. Oh, and my son nice. lives in LA. Oh, perfect. Yes. Perfect excuse. Very good. Well, let's hope all of those things come up. Uh, great to have you on the show. And next, we welcome Diane and Mark. Now, how do you two know each other? Well, about four years ago, <clears throat> I was fed up with working as a counsellor on my own, and uh, Mark came to join me. And we've been friends ever since. So we've known each other for four years. For four years. And whereabouts do you work? Uh, we work in a sixth form college in Huddersfield. In Huddersfield. And I moonlight as a sex therapist. <laughs> <laughs> Slightly an unfortunate choice of words there, <laughs> Diane. But, um, yeah, OK. And Mark, what, 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 what do you do at the, in Huddersfield? You're, you're a counsellor I'm a counsellor as, well. as well with Diane, yeah. OK. No, any moonlighting from you? <laughs> no. No, no. Um, what, what would you like to see come up this afternoon, Mark? What, what, what sort of things do you like to do? Um, I guess I'd like 60s French... Music to come up, that would be my speciality. 60s yeah. French yeah. music. Fingers crossed, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Is it on? Yes, yeah, it's, a, it's, a <laughs> six, it's a 60s French music special, Mark. Great, I mean... <laughs> um, Diane, while Mark's listening to his, uh, to his 60s music, what do you like to do? Well, I really like to listen to Star Wars music. No, Star Wars. I, I like to sort of, you know... Chill out. My kids will be laughing their heads off as I'm saying this, probably watching this. Star yeah. Wars? Yeah, I like Star Wars. She's a, a sci-fi nerd. I'm a bit of a geek. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it, but Star Wars is the, is the acme of, of all is, science fiction, as far yeah. as you're concerned. It's great to have you on the show. Very, very best of luck to the pair yeah, of you. you. And finally, we welcome back Ali and Lucy. You were also on the show last time. Remind us how you did. We did pretty well, I think. We got to the head-to-head, -head, but it all sort of folded after that. Warsaw Pact. Yeah. was unfortunate. Yeah. Rising damp. And rising damp was, was unlucky, I think. Lucy, what we heard about, obviously, last time, uh, we heard all about Ali's band. In fact, not just about, we heard Ali's band as well. Um, what do you like to do? You're a, you're a student at York. Yeah, I'm studying what? English literature, so I'm hoping something with literature comes up, obviously. Very good. Um, Ali, w what would you love to see come up? What would be a brilliant category for you? I'm, I think I'm pretty strong on UK geography. Um, I've been all over the British Isles, and I think I know quite a few... In a minibus. Yeah. <laughs> I know some odd places, um, and I think I'm quite strong on food and drink. I say that, and it's going to come up, and I'm going to embarrass myself, but... <laughs> well, we'll find out soon enough. Well, it's, it's great to have you back. We'll find out more about all of you throughout the show. Uh, there's only one person left for me to introduce. In the bath of obscurity, he is the pointless rubber duck. He is my pointless friend. He's Richard. Hiya. <laughs> Good afternoon to you. A very good afternoon to you too. Uh, two returning pairs today. They had very, very differing fortunes last time. I think Paul and Nick were very, very unlucky. Got knocked out in the first round, so we should see a bit more of them. And Ali and Lucy got all the way through to the head-to-head. -head. Had a tough head-to-head, -head, though. But uh, they've already proved themselves. So it should be a pretty tough show, I think. Even better for Ali, the first category, if he likes UK geography, is right up his street. 
Very good indeed. Well, we've put all our questions to 100 people before the show, but this is pointless. We are after the obscure answers they didn't get. To stay in the game with a chance to win our jackpot, all our players need to do is score as few points as they can. Now, what everyone's trying to do, of course, is find a pointless answer. That's an answer that none of our 100 people gave. And each time that happens, we will add £250 to the jackpot. Now, nobody won the jackpot last time, so we add another £1,000 to that. So today's jackpot starts off at £3,500. Right, let's play Pointless. Now, in the first round, each of you must give me one answer and you cannot confer with your partner. Whichever team has the highest score at the end of the round will be eliminated. OK, our first category this afternoon is... Islands. Can you all decide in your pairs who's going to go first, who's going to go second? And whoever's going first, please step up to the podium. OK, let's find out what the question is. We gave 100 people 100 seconds to name as many Hebridean islands as they could. Yeah, the correct answers uh, in this round will all be islands in the inner or outer Hebrides. OK, thank you very much, Richard. Now, then, before the show, you all drew lots, and Paul and Nick, you get to go first. Now, in this round, you're going to be pleased to hear, we're going to give you a choice of seven possible... Oh. Answer. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> We're going to give you a choice of seven possible answers on the board in each pass. Your first set of seven answers reads like this Cabock, Barra, Lismore, Sky, Muck, Corncrake, Grimsey. I'll read those one more time Cabock, Barra, Lismore, Sky, Muck, Corncrake, and Grimsey. Now, I can tell you that at least one of those answers is pointless, but be very careful indeed because at least one of those answers is wrong. Pick an incorrect one and you will, of course, score the maximum of 100 points. So, Paul, are you in a better position now I've told you that you've got...? Uh, well, yeah, because I don't know any of them except one, I recognise. Right. Never heard of any of the others. No. OK. Maybe a two. Have you ever been up there to the Hebrides? I've been on one of them. I'm going to take a, a little gamble just trying to read what Nick thinks of that. Well, Nick. I don't think he probably knows any of them either. <laughs> um, I'm going to go with Corncrake. Corncrake, you are saying. There it is, one up from the bottom. What do you think, Nick? Corncrake? I've got no idea, so I guess as good as any. Good luck. Let's see if it's right, and if it is, let's see how many people said Corncrake. Oh, oh bad no. luck, Paul. Not another one. Um, unfortunately, Corncrake is an incorrect answer, which means it scores you the maximum of 100 points. Bad luck. Richard? Yeah, sorry, Paul. Corncrake is a, is a rare Scottish bird, not, a, not an island, I'm afraid. <laughs> <sighs> Here we go again. There we are. Now then, Lynn. Lynn, we come to you. I think you might know quite a few of these. Not a clue. Not a clue? <laughs> not a clue. Never been not that far. Not a clue. Well, I tell you what. Maybe there was only one incorrect answer on the board. Maybe. Maybe. And maybe Paul has just mind-swept for you. Mm. Maybe. Maybe. There is most definitely at least one pointless answer on the board. I like the sound of... Barra. Barra. Don't know whether it's there. Is that a complete not? guess? Or complete do you think guess. you might have heard of that? I don't think I have heard of it. OK. Barra. Let's see if Barra's right. And if it is, let's see how many people said Barra. It is right. Good one, yes, well done. Ooh. 22 for Barra. I'm happy for that. 22, not a bad score. Richard, Barra. Yeah, well done, Lynn. Barra's in the Outer Hebrides, one of the, one of the larger, better-known islands in the Outer Hebrides. OK, now then, Diane. We are looking for Hebridean islands. What do you think? Well, I know one, and the other one's gone. Um, so I'm going to go for one, I think... I think it's right. Lismore, but I don't... Yeah, Lismore, go on. Lismore, you're saying? Let's see if Lismore is right. And if it is, how many people said Lismore? Oh. It's right! <laughs> Not only right, Dan. <laughs> it 
takes a pointless answer. That means it adds £250 to today's jackpot and takes the total up to £3,750 and it scores you nothing. Very well done, Richard. Yeah, very well played, Diane. Great start to the show. Uh, it's in the Inner Hebrides, this more. It's got a population of about 150 people. Sorry. <laughs> Hello, if you're watching. <laughs> Ali, we're looking for Hebridean Islands. I'm certain about one. I'm pretty sure about another. And the other two I've got no idea about. So I think um, Sky's a dead cert for me. Um, and Muck is the one I'm pretty sure about. Um, and I'm not sure about the other two, so I'm going to go for Muck. I'm sort of quietly confident that that's, that's uh, one. What do you think, Lucy? I trust your judgment, Thank you know, you. Scotland. Muck. Muck. Did uh, Elliot Miner play Muck ever? <laughs> <laughs> we never got that far. One day, maybe. <laughs> one day. One day. OK, well, let's see if Muck's right. And if it is, let's see how many people said Muck. That's right. Well done, Ali. Four points for Mark. Richard. Yeah, very well played, Ali. Gaelic for Isle of Pigs. Uh, let's take a look at the rest of the board. Which is the place you've been to, Paul, on there? Sky. Oh, you, should have, you, you could have said it. Sky would have scored you 55 points. Of Kabok and Grimsay, one is incorrect, one is a pointless answer, what do you think? Um, I think Grimsay is right, because there are a few that end A-Y, aren't they? Yeah, but Grimsay is right, absolutely well done. If you said Grimsay at home, it's a pointless answer. And Kabok is a, is a Scottish cheese. So it's an incorrect answer. It's a delicious incorrect answer. Very good. Thank you very much, Richard. Let's take a look at the scores. As they stand, Diane and Mark looking very strong indeed, with a beautiful score of zero. Then we go up to Ali and Lucy on four, and then up to Lynn and Glenis on 22, and then up quite a long way to Paul and Nick on 100. So, yes, Nick, you have your work cut out in this <laughs> next pass, least. to say <laughs> the least. Good luck with that. OK, we're going to come back down the line. Can the second players please take their places at the podium? OK, we're going to put seven more answers on the board. Remember, we are looking for Hebridean Islands, and here we go. We have got Rum, Tyree, Gear, Summer Isle, St Clair, Egg and Mull. I'll read those one more time. Rum, Tyree, Gear, Summer Isle, St Clair, Egg and Mull. And again, I can tell you that at least one of those answers is pointless and at least one of those answers is incorrect. So try and avoid those incorrect ones. Now, Lucy... Ali has set you up fabulously there with Muck. Yeah. You're on four. The high scorers are Nick and Paul on 100. If you can score 95 or less, you are through to the next round. I'm trying to look for ones that sound Gaelic. I know Irish Gaelic. I don't, I don't know how similar it is. And there's one that rings a bell, but I don't know if it's, you know, if it's actually because it's an island or because I know it from somewhere else. But so how, do you, how do you know Irish Gaelic? Um, I went to school in Ireland, secondary school. I see. So do you, you lived in Ireland for yeah, a number of eight years. years? Eight years. Okay, I'm going to guess because we're in quite a comfortable position. So um, I'm going to say mull. You're going to say mull? Sounds good to me. Mull. Here is your red line. Below that red line with mull, you are through to the next round. Very best of luck. Is mull right? How many people said it? That's right. Very well done, Lucy. You're through. 30 for Mal. Very good, that takes your total up to 34. Richard? Yeah, well played Lucy, safely through with Mal. Again, one of the better known of the Hebridean Islands. Mark. Well, how well did Diane do? Brilliantly. Brilliantly? Yeah, absolutely. I don't know how to pronounce it, but I'm going to go for Gia. You're going to go for Gia. Is that how you say it? Yeah. Very good, there is Gia, third one down. Let's see if that's right, and if it is... Let's see how many people said gear. There's your red line. That's right. Not just right. Well, that's pointless. It adds £250 to today's jackpot, takes the total up to £4,000. It scores you nothing, and it leaves your total at nothing. Very, very well done. Richard. Yeah, blimey, Mark and Diane. Look at, <laughs> look at Diane's poker face there. <laughs> Gives nothing away, doesn't it? Uh, yeah, it was bought in, the gear was bought in 1944 by Sir James Horlick of the, uh, of the Hot Drink Company. 
Glynis. Mm. <laughs> so remember, we are looking for Hebridean islands. I really like the questions in the first, or the answers in the first round. <laughs> I did know four of them. But I somehow think I remember hearing the shipping forecasts because I'm rather ancient. And I think Tyree is an island. Tyree. It's definitely something. It is definitely something. It rings something. a very strong bell. <laughs> Tyree. Is it a Hebridean island? I hope so. I hope so. Oh, I hope so too. The high <laughs> scorers are Nick and Paul on 100. If you can score 77 or less with Tyree, you are through to the next round. There is your red line. You're saying Tyree. Let's see if that's right. And if it is, let's see how many people said it. Tyree. Well done. It's right, Glenis. <laughs> and you are through to the next round. Brilliant. Oh, it's a brilliant score. Four for Tyree. It takes your total up to 26. Richard. Yeah, very well done, Glenys. Tyree is one of Britain's sunniest places in the, uh, in the summer, Tyree. In fact, the whole of the Hebrides is very, very beautiful. If, uh, I know lots of people here haven't been, but it's, really, it's worth a visit. Have you been? Oh, and how? Yeah, Just I love wonderful, it. wonderful, aren't they? Nick, I tell you some terrible news. Oh, no. I what? have awful news for you. I'm afraid your high score of 100 is, is, is unbeatable. It's unbeatable. You haven't even given your answer, and already no. you are the high scorers. Some very good scores before me. I can't complain about that. Well, that's true. Yeah. I tell you what you can do, though. Your, le your legacy to this, to this show could <laughs> yeah. be to add £250 to the jackpot by finding a pointless answer. I think you can do it. Um, I'm glad you do, because I'm not so sure. Um, You're the last person to have this board, so talk us yeah. through it. I'm looking at this. I've got no idea at all. I'm going to have to have a shot in the dark. I don't think rum's one, but it probably is. I'm looking at the art of St. Clair or Egg, I'm thinking of, to be honest. Or it might even be summer old, but I don't think rum's one, but who knows. Um, and the Gaelic theme can go with, I'll go with egg. You're going to go with egg? Yeah, why not? Egg on a face, you might as well carry on. <laughs> <laughs> oh. OK, egg, you are saying. There's no yeah. red line for you, I'm afraid, because you're the high scorers. Yeah. Let's see if it's right. Egg, how many people said it? Well done, Nick, it's right. Go on, come for nothing. Go on, Let's go on. see, let's go see. On. Oh, 11. Yeah, well done. 11 for egg. Takes your total up to 111. Yeah, a nice way to finish, Nick. Well done. Uh, long associated with the Clan MacDonald, the, uh, the Isle of Egg. Let's take a look through the rest of the board. Rum is a, uh, is a Hebridean island, actually, but would have scored you nine points. Slightly better answer. And those other two, Xander, pointless or Well, we've, we all know the Isle of St. Clair. Isle of St. Clair, yeah, that's an incorrect answer, absolutely. She's been on the Generation game. And Summer uh, Isle. Summer Isle is most definitely an island, yes. That's right, yeah, Summer Isle. Oh, no! Summer Isle is, is the island on the Wicker Man. Summer Isle. Very sorry about that, so it's an incorrect answer. Thank you very much, Richard. So at the end of round one, the losing pair with the highest score again, Paul and Nick. This is just not right. I was thinking, I think, at least head-to-head. -head. Maybe I'd even like finalists. To that we will be head-to-head -head when we get out. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, it has been lovely having you on the show. It's I'm sorry. Class, we yeah. haven't seen no. nearly enough of you, I'm afraid to say, though. Uh, and we have to say goodbye now. Thank you. But thank nonetheless, you much. thank you very much, Blaine. Great thank comparisons. You. Thanks. <laughs> but for the remaining three pairs, now it's time for round two. Now, obviously, there's only room for two pairs in the head-to-head, -head, so one of the pairs in front of me now is going to be leaving at the end of this round. OK, our round two category this afternoon is... TV. Can you all decide in your pairs who's going to go first, who's going to go second? And whoever's going first, please step up to the podium. And our round two question this afternoon concerns TV shows and their spin-offs. Yeah, we're going to show you six spin-offs on each pass. We asked 100 people which show did they spin-off from. The more obscure ones are going to score you fewer points. If you give us an incorrect answer, though, you're going to score 100 points. So there's 12 spin-offs in all up there. See how many you get at home. Thanks very much, Richard. So we are looking for the original TV shows of which these are TV spin-offs. And we have got The Green Green Grass, George and Mildred, The Colbys, Lewis, Tucker's Luck and Rhoda. I'll read those one more time. The Green Green Grass, George and Mildred, The Colbys, Lewis, Tucker's Luck and Rhoda. So there they are. Now Glenis. Now then Glenis. What's this like as a category for you? <laughs> Not very good. Um, I know a couple of them. 
but I don't want to go for them because I think they might be the sort of obvious answers. And I'm probably going to go for an obvious answer anyway, but I'm going to go for the Colbys was a spin-off from Dallas. The Colbys Dallas, you're saying? Let's see if that's right. And if it is, let's see how many people knew that answer. Oh, oh God. bad luck, Glennis. Oh, I shouldn't have said that. <laughs> You Sorry. clearly shouldn't have said <laughs> that. That is an incorrect answer, Sorry, which I'm afraid means you scored the maximum of 100 points, I'm sorry to say. Richard? Uh, yeah, sorry, Glenn, so I won't give the correct answer just in case Mark or Lucy want to have a go at the same one. So then, Mark, remember, we're looking for the TV shows of which these shows are spin-offs. You and Diane scored a double pointless in the first round. Let's see if you can follow that up this round with another super low score. Um, do you watch a lot of television? Yeah, I watch quite a lot, yeah. So this is quite a good topic. I know a few of those up there. OK. Just depends how confident I'm going to be on going for the one I'm less sure about. Well, maybe Glennis's high score might give you a, a boost of confidence. Yeah. I'm going to go for my favourite TV programme in the 80s. Ooh. And the spin-off of the Colbys came from Dynasty. Dynasty. Yes. There you are, Glennis. Dynasty. <laughs> Let's see if that's right. The Colbys. Dynasty. There we are. Well done, Mark. <laughs> 27. <laughs> Not a bad score at all for Dynasty, Richard. Uh, yeah, well played, Mark. Tough luck, Glennis. It was, uh, it was uh, Dynasty. Uh, the Colby star Charlton Heston, and uh, they ended it after two series with an alien abduction. I had no idea. Mm. Yeah, it was quite something. Very good. Great answer, Mark. So, Lucy, we come to you. You're the last person to have this board, so talk us through all the answers you can um, give. Well, I only know one, I'm afraid, but I do know it for certain. So I'm just going to have to, even though it's probably obvious, say the green, green grass and only fools and horses. Oh, green, green grass and only fools and horses, you are saying. Let's see if that's right. And if it is, let's see how many people knew that answer. There we are, it's right. 46. Not a terrible score. 46 for Only Fools and Horses. Uh, yeah, well done, Lucy. A nice and safe score. Featured Marlene and Boise. Let's take a look at all four of them left. The biggest answer of all is Lewis. And that was, of course, a spin-off from Inspector Morse. That would have scored 67 points. Tucker's Luck is a spin-off. Do you remember that? Grange Hill. From Grange Hill, exactly right, with, uh, with Todd Carty. 38 points. George and Mildred, slightly tougher one. Spin-off from Man About the House. Well done if you got that at home. Would have scored 17. The best answer of all, though, is Rhoda, which is uh, uh, more famous in America than here. It was a spin-off of the Mary Tyler Moore Show. Scored four points, so well done if you got that. That's the best answer on the board. OK, well, we're halfway through the round, so let's take a look at the scores as they stand. Mark, you've done it again. The lowest score on the pass, <laughs> 27. Then up to 46, Lucy and Ali. And then Glennis and Lynn, I'm afraid, an incorrect answer there. That scored you 100 points. So, yes, Lynn, you have your work cut out in the next pass. OK, we're going to come back down the line. Can the second players please take their places at the podium? OK, we're going to put another six answers on the board. And we have got... Torchwood, Mork and Mindy, A Different World, Frasier, Benson, Knott's Landing. I'll read those one more time. Torchwood, Mork and Mindy, A Different World, Frasier, Benson and Knott's Landing. Now, remember, we are looking for the original TV shows of which these are spin-offs. And, obviously, you're trying to find the one that the fewest of our 100 people knew. Now, Ali. Now then, Ali, Lucy's left you in a pretty comfortable position. Lynn and Glennis are the high scorers on 100. If you can score 53 or less with your answer, you are definitely through to the next round. I don't think I'm going to be able to. I literally know none of them. Uh... TV is one of the weakest things. I, I, I'm, I watch reality TV and that's as far as it goes. Lucy is desperately trying to beam <laughs> answers into you. I bet she knows at least half of them, if not more. I'm going to go for Torchwood. I've got a vague idea of what Torchwood might be like. I'm going to go for Inspector Morse. Another Inspector Morse spin-off. Uh, Torchwood, what are you thinking, Lucy? I, I know the answer. <laughs> you know the answer, yeah. There you are, there's your red line. Below that red line, through to the head-to-head. -to -head. Torchwood, Inspector Morse, you're saying, let's see if it's right, and if it is, let's see how many people knew that. Oh. Bad luck, Ali, I'm afraid that's an incorrect answer, which means you score the maximum of 100 points, taking your total up to 146. 
Richard. Yes, it is an incorrect answer. There was, there was an episode of Morse where he used the torch in a wood. <laughs> Yeah, that's what you're thinking. I won't give the answer just in case uh, Diane or Lynn want to have a go at the same one. Diane. So remember, we're looking for the TV shows of which these shows are spin-offs. The high scorers are Ali and Lucy on 146. You are through to the head-to-head. -head. Whatever happens, you'll never overtake that score. Bearing that in mind, why not see if you can find a really low-scoring answer on this board? Because <laughs> I don't know any. <laughs> but I think the only two I know are high scoring. I'm going to go, Frasier, I think, was from Cheers. Frasier, Cheers, you are saying? Yeah. I think I know that one. <laughs> for Very good. Well, there's no red line for you. You are through to the next round, whatever happens. So let's see if that's right. Frasier, Cheers. Well done. 43. Not a bad score. Takes your total up to 70. Richard. Yeah, well played, Diane. Safely through. Fraser Crane leaves the, the bar in Boston, moves to Seattle to be a, a radio uh, counsellor. Very good. Now then, Lynn, it's yes. all in your hands. I know. The high scorers at the moment are Ali and Lucy on 146. If you score 45 or less with this, you stay and are through to the head to head. You're the last person to have this board, so talk us through it. Is this a good subject for you? Uh, not really, no. Um, I knew Frasier. Yeah? I think I know Torchwood. Knott's Landing could even be the one that Glennie said the last time. <laughs> Benson I can see, but I can't see the programme before Benson. So I think I'm going to have to go with Torchwood, and I think it's going to be a lot more than 46, if it's right. So I'm going to say Doctor Who. Torchwood, Doctor Who. Were you anywhere near saying that, Ali? I'm going to say that, honestly, that crossed my mind. I'm not lying, but um, it's, I think it's right. The question is, will it go below 45? I think not. 45 or below? <sighs> Only one way to find out. Let's see. Is Torchwood Doctor Who right? And if it is, how many people said it? There's your red line. Below that red line, you are in the head-to-head. -head. Above that red line, Ali and Lucy are in the head-to-head. -head. Oh. Bad luck, Lynn. I'm afraid that scores you 67, which takes your total up to an unbeatable 167, Richard. Yeah, a big sigh of relief from Ali there. <laughs> yeah, Torchwood, uh, it's an anagram of Doctor Who as well. But let's take a look at the rest of the board. Yeah, if you had given the same answer, if you'd said Dallas, yeah. you'd be through to the next round. Would have scored you a much lower 38 points. Morecambe and Mindy was a spin-off from Happy Days, believe it or not. Would have scored you 11 points. I think it became as famous as Happy Days. Benson was a spin-off from Soap. Would have scored you seven. And the best answer of all, very obscure, spin-off from The Cosby Show, A Different World, where his daughter goes to university. Would have scored three. Very well done if you got that one. OK, thank you very much, Richard. So at the end of round two, the losing pair with the highest score, I'm afraid, Lynn and Glennis. It was quite tough, this, though, wasn't it? I mean, a lot of American shows there. Yeah. yeah. My favourite's Fraser. I still watch that now. Yeah. Mm. A lot more successful, I'd say, than Cheers, wasn't it, Fraser? Fraser, no. Cheers. Cheers, probably the most successful US sitcom of all time, apart from maybe MASH. I mean, Fraser, very, very successful, though. Well, there you are. Um, sadly, you not incredibly successful in this round. However... We will see you again next time when I'm, I have every confidence you will storm it through to the final. Uh, meanwhile, thanks very much for playing. Great contestants, Lynn and Glennis. Thank you. But for the remaining two pairs, things are about to get even more exciting now as we enter the head-to-head. -head. Very well done, Diane and Mark, Ali and Lucy. You've made it through to the head-to-head. -head. Now, obviously, only one pair can make it through to today's final and play for the jackpot, which currently stands... £4,000. <laughs> You're going to go head-to-head -head on the best of three questions. Now, for each question, each pair needs to give me just one answer, but you are now allowed to confer. All you have to do is come up with an answer that scores less than the other pair and you will win that question. The first pair to get to the best of three will be playing for today's jackpot. Let's play Pointless. OK, here is your first question. We gave 100 people 100 seconds to name as many winners of the Cricket World Cup 
as they could. Richard. Yeah, we're looking for any team that has won Cricket's World Cup from the first tournament in 1975 up to and including 2011. OK, thanks very much. Uh, Diane and Mark, because you played best throughout the show so far, you get to go first. <laughs> so we're looking for winners of the Cricket World Cup. We don't know. Uh, <laughs> I think I know. Go on then. Um, you don't. I'm going to say India. India. Okay. Very good. India. I'll take India. Ali and Lucy. Sports kind of my. Yeah, I would have thought India. I don't in, know. India and Pakistan are both. They definitely won it. I'm pretty sure. I'm not sure which one would be lower. Um, oh, we can't go for India. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but there's also England, there's South Africa, there's, there's some big cricketing nations. Do you reckon South Africa's quite I don't low. know if they've won it, but yeah. since 1970, I'm, I don't know how often it is, if it's every year or every two years. Cricket's not my sport, but if you want to go for safe, I'd say Pakistan. If you want to go risky, okay, we can go for something. And risk it's... Well, I don't really know, so it's up to you. Pakistan. I think it's safe. You're going to say Pakistan. We have India, we have Pakistan. Let's put them to the test. Diane and Mark said India. Let's see if that's right. And if it is, let's see how many people said India. Yes, of course. 78 for India. <laughs> Ali and Lucy have gone with Pakistan. Let's see if that's right. And if it is, let's see how many people said Pakistan. 78 is what you have to beat. It's right. And it wins. 54. 54 beats 78. So after the first question, Ali and Lucy are up 1-0. Richard. Yeah, well played, Ali. And lucky you didn't say either England or South Africa because neither of them have ever won it. Uh, there are five answers here. Let's take a look at them. There's a couple of answers that would have beaten Pakistan. West Indies won the first two tournaments, 36. Sri Lanka, they won in 1996. That would have scored you 39. Pakistan won it in, uh, in 1992 in Imran Khan's last game, that's 54. India there, 78, they've won it twice. And rather typically Australia, right at the top there, they've won it four times and would have scored you 81. Very well done if you got all of those. Thanks very much, Richard. Here is your second question. Diane and Mark, you have to win this to stay in the game. Here it comes. We gave 100 people 100 seconds to name as many pink ladies and tea birds in Greece as they could. Yeah, simply any of the original members of the Pink Ladies or the T-Birds in the film Grease, and we're looking for the character names, not the uh, actors or actresses that played them. Thank you very much. Now, Ali and Lucy, you get to go first this time. Okay. You look very pleased with this category, Lucy. <laughs> I like Grease. Um, <laughs> we're going to say um, Marty. Marty. Okay. Ali and Lucy going with Marty. Diane and Mark. I think that's a very good answer, and I think I'm going to struggle to beat it. Um, My mind's gone blank. There's Frenchie and Kanicki, but I think they're probably quite high scoring. Kanicki um, was one of the Rizzo. two points. You Kinnicky. have to win this point to stay in the game. Kanicki? Go on, Kanicki. 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 OK, we have Marty, we have Kanicki. In the order they were given, Ali and Lucy have gone with Marty. You win this point, you are through to the final. Marty, is it right how many people said it? It's right. Down it goes. Down it goes. Look at that. Two for Marty. <laughs> Marty. That's a brilliant answer, Lucy. Very well done. Now, Mark and Diane. You have said Kanicki. Let's see if Kanicki's right. And if it is, let's see how many people said Kanicki. <laughs> A bad answer at all for Diane and Mark Kanicki. A great score. Sadly, Marty was two. There's, there's no beating that. Uh, which means, after only two questions, Ali and Lucy are through to the final 2-0. Richard? Yeah, well played both teams there. And good teamwork from Ali and Lucy. Ali wins the first point, Lucy wins the second one, through to the final. Uh, there would have been some beating, Marty. Actually, there's a couple of answers that would have won the point. Let's take a look at them all. Putsy and Jan, both would have scored one point. Both would have got you there. Sonny would have scored you two, as would Marty and Doody. Two each. Kanicki there with 12, played by the, uh, the late Jeff Conaway, of course. There's Frenchie on 19, Rizzo 24, and right at the top, Danny on 40. 
OK, thanks very much, Richard. So the losing pair at the end of the head-to-head, -head, I'm afraid it's Diane and Mark. Did you know any of those other lower-scoring ones? Mm. <sighs> yeah. Had they just eluded you when the pressure was I was thinking was of puts in my head, but I couldn't have come up with putsy. <laughs> I was remembering a line from Greece, but when the name was in it, but, yeah. But you gave us two pointless answers in round I one. I did, yeah. Yes. Didn't we? You <laughs> shone for the, from the start. Um, and you will shine again. You've made it all the way through to the head-to-head. -head. You will be back next time, when I have every confidence you will do as well, if not better. But in the meantime, thanks very much for playing. Great contestants, thank you. <laughs> but for Ali and Lucy, it's now time for our pointless final and the chance to win our jackpot of £4,000. So congratulations, Ali and Lucy. You've fought off all the competition and you have won our coveted pointless trophy. So very, very well done. You now have a chance to win our pointless jackpot. And at the end of today's show, the jackpot stands at £4,000. There it is. Now, the rules are very simple. To win that money, all you have to do is find a pointless answer. That's an answer that none of our 100 people could think of. We've had two pointless answers on the show today, so you only have to find one more to go home with that money. First, though, you've got to choose a category, and you can choose from these three options. They are screen icons, fashion, pop legends. None of them are great, are they? They're all a bit horrid. Um, what do you reckon to screen icons? Out of the three... I think Screen Icons is probably good. Pop Legends, I mean, it's so... I know literally a handful, and then the rest would be um, a problem. So I think screen... Fashion is so broad, it could be anything. Between the top two, I think, because I don't know how much you know about fashion, do you? Not a lot. <laughs> screen Icons? Yeah, OK, Screen Icons. Screen Icons it is, by a process of elimination. OK, well, let's find out what the question is. We gave 100 people 100 seconds to name as many... Audrey Hepburn films as they could. Audrey <laughs> Hepburn films, Richard. Oh. Yeah, any feature film made for cinema release for which Audrey Hepburn has received an acting credit, please. As always, TV films, short films, documentaries don't count. Any Audrey Hepburn film, please. You now have up to one minute to come up with three answers, and all you need to win that £4,000 jackpot is for just one of those answers to be pointless. Your 60 seconds start now. Audrey Hepburn. I don't really know. I know Breakfast at Tiffany's, but I'm definitely not putting this. Throw it in, it's the right answer. Honestly, I can't think of... I can just about picture her. There's so many that... I don't, I don't think I would ever know any pointless ones. Can you think of anything that might... Like a trigger word that might you can make up a title that could be the title? Nope. <laughs> I don't... I really don't. Uh, I can't even think... What, what's, the, like, what's the video was it? 50s? 60s? I think 50s. 50s. It's old. Think of, think of, think We're of young. Old films. This is not good. Um, are, we, are we just gonna make up titles and hope that they sound good? Oh my god, I guess so. Well, I, I mean, old films that Nightmare on the uh, Murder on the Orient Express is that I don't know. Okay, yeah, that's old. It, is she in it? Who knows? Hopefully. Right, so those are two. Come up with a third one that sounds like a film title that would have her in it. I can't think of what. This is really annoying me. I can't think of what film she's in. Got to come up with a third one quickly. Bella. Okay, Bella. Right. OK, you have three titles. <laughs> your time is up. We were looking for Audrey Hepburn film titles. I now need your three answers. What are you going to give me? Well, we only really knew one. You knew And one. I'm yeah. pretty sure it's her biggest film, so it's not going to be pointless. But at least we have one right answer, at least. And we thought that's Breakfast at Tiffany's. Breakfast at Tiffany's, OK. Um, again, a big film, so if she is in it, which I doubt she is, but Murder on the Orient Express. Murder on the Orient Express. And the third one... Um, just in the last five seconds, I came up with a made-up title. I think she's good-looking, isn't she? Yeah, I Yeah, so looking. Bella, which is... <laughs> Bella. Good logic. Yeah. Brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> she might, it might be a film and she might be in it. OK, which do you think is your most confident punt at a... Um, Breakfast at Tiffany's. OK, Breakfast at Tiffany's, we'll put that third. Least confident... Bella. Bella. <laughs> We'll put that up first. OK, so let's put them up on the board in that order, and here they are. Bella, Murder on the Orient Express, and Breakfast at Tiffany's. There they are. Three answers. We were looking for Audrey Hepburn films. You said this was your least confident answer. It's a film you've... Made up. You've actually just made up. Yeah. Sounds good, though. There's a film called Bella. In fact, there might be several. Remakes. <laughs> in Italian. <laughs> 
You only have to find one pointless answer to win that jackpot of £4,000. Let's see if Bella's a correct answer, and if it is, let's see how many people said Bella. No! Alas, Bella, not a film with Audrey Hepburn in it. Unfortunately, not a pointless answer. Two more chances to win £4,000. Now, what would you do with £4,000? Not get a job. <laughs> <laughs> um, go on holiday. Yeah, we could probably survive without a job for, with £4,000. And a holiday, yeah. And a holiday, okay. so yeah. Brilliant. That'd Just be nice. like frugally, we'll be fine. Yeah. <laughs> you can watch lots of Audrey Hepburn DVDs. <laughs> OK, your next answer is Murder on the Orient Express. Does it have a little sort of gamine Audrey Hepburn figure in it? Let's find out. <laughs> Audrey Hepburn, Murder on the Orient Express. Is that right? And if it is, how many people said it? Oh, bad luck. Unfortunately, also not a correct answer. So therefore not pointless, which means you only have one more chance to win today's jackpot. Well, I know this is right, but I don't think it's pointless. This is right. This is right, you think? Breakfast at Tiffany's. We are looking for Audrey Hepburn films. This is your last shot at today's jackpot of £4,000. You have to hope that it's right and it is pointless. Breakfast at Tiffany's. How many people said it? Is it correct? There we are, it's right. It's right. Now, if this goes all the way down to zero, you are leaving here. <laughs> <laughs> With £4,000, I was about to say. <laughs> Unfortunately, 58 people knew that, so I'm afraid not a pointless answer, which I'm afraid means you don't win today's jackpot of £4,000, oh, well. which rolls over onto the next show. But you have been fantastic contestants, and you do get to take home our pointless trophy, so well done for that. <laughs> So, Richard. Yeah, unlucky guys played very well throughout. I would genuinely recommend a, a weekend Audrey Hepburn DVD marathon, though. She made some absolutely brilliant films. Some of the high scorers here, if you watch Breakfast at Tiffany's, Charade, Wait Until Dark, Funny Face, you would love them all, I suspect. Uh, there's a whole bunch of pointless answers. Let's talk about Murder on the Orient Express, though, quickly. The big 70s version was Lauren Bacall and Ingrid Bergman, but no, uh, no Audrey Hepburn. Let's take a look at some uh, pointless ones up here. Always, that was her last ever film. She donated her entire fee to UNICEF. Bloodline, How to Steal a Million, another brilliant film with uh, Peter O'Toole. Uh, Love in the Afternoon, the Secret People, They All Laughed. All of these pointless answers. Very well done if you've got any of these at home. Two for the road. We will all go to Monte Carlo and Young Wives' Tale. Uh, but very well played and tough luck. Well, unfortunately, we have to say goodbye to you, Ali and Lucy, but it's been brilliant having you on the show. Thank you both so much for playing. <laughs> Nobody's won our jackpot today, so it rolls over, which means on the next show we will be playing for £5,000. <laughs> Join us then to see if someone can win it. Meanwhile, it's goodbye from Richard. Goodbye. And it's goodbye from me. Goodbye. Goodbye.